Hi guys, um, in this video what I want to do is um, recap the triangle inequality and then also show you the proof for the um, sort of generalized triangle inequality with induction that we didn't get around to in class. So first of all, just to recap what the triangle inequality is, um, it says that the mod of Z1 plus the mod of Z2 is going to be greater than or equal to the mod of Z1 plus the mod of Z2. Um, we proved that in class, you guys did, um, and we can sort of look at it graphically and it kind of makes sense because if you imagine that's Z1, we add Z2, um, the mod of Z1 is the length of this line and the mod of Z2 is the length of this line. So to get from here to here, one way of going is to take this entire vector and then this entire vector or the shortcut is actually oh my pen isn't great here the shortcut is the vector that represents z1 plus z2 so what the triangle inequality is actually saying is that it's always longer in terms of distance to get from here to here by taking z1 and then z2 um, than it is by just taking the direct route. Um, now note that it's greater than or equal to. The case where it's the equal to is when um, Z1 and Z2 actually lie on the same uh, line, so their arguments would be the same. And so then you're just you're sort of traveling in a straight line regardless. So that's what the triangle inequality says. Um, so we've shown that's true. Now what we didn't really get a chance to look at is what I would call the generalized um, triangle inequality. And that basically says that um, we can take this out to any number of complex numbers. So Z1 plus Z2 plus a whole bunch of complex numbers up to Z um, n. If we add up all their moduluses, moduli, that's going to be greater than or equal to the modulus of all of them added together. So we're going to prove this by induction. So um, if that's our Pn, let's prove P1 first of all. Well, if it's P1, we've just got Z1 um, modded and that's going to be greater than or equal to the mod of Z1 on the other side because they're equal, so it meets that condition of equality. So therefore P1 is true, that's lovely. Now what we're gonna do is assume PK, and I'll just move down to here. So um, PK says that Z1 plus Z2 plus a whole bunch plus zk are going to be greater than or equal to the mod of all of them added together. Now instead of um, sort of writing out pk plus 1, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work towards pk plus 1 from pk. You might remember that when we're dealing with inequality um, proofs by induction, that's often a really nice way to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the modulus of ZK plus one to both sides. So that means that the left hand side becomes the same thing uh, up to ZK plus ZK plus one, and that's gonna be greater than or equal to the mod of Z1 plus Z2 plus ZK, and then plus the mod of ZK plus one. Now, we've got to, um, Think back to what we already know about the triangle inequality. Our original triangle inequality, um, just for a regular triangle, says that the modulus of two complex numbers added together is going to be greater than the modulus 
of those two complex numbers added. So if we go back to where we're up to here and look at the left hand side, whatever this is, this is some complex number. number. It's going to be some sort of complex number. Here's another complex number and we're actually adding the modulus of those two complex numbers. So we know that the module um, that if we add the these two the modulus of these two complex numbers together, that's going to be greater than or equal to the modulus of um, this number plus this number. So that means we can actually say that this is greater than or equal to um, that complex number plus that complex number based on the, the triangle inequality that we've already proved. Um, and if this statement is greater than or equal to this statement, well then this is also greater than or equal to this. So what we've actually shown is that PK plus one is true. If PK is true. So, Relatively simple induction proof. Um, what it relies on, and this is true for most of your induction proofs with complex numbers, is taking the case that we've already proven for um, two complex numbers and then applying that to the case where we've got n complex numbers. And that's often the way that you get the, these complex number proofs to work out. Um, because you can prove it for two complex numbers using um, either you know, vector geometry or by letting them equal A plus BI, any sort of technique like that. And then it, you can apply that to your, your generalized inequality. Just one more thing, just thinking about what this um, generalized inequality means. Well, what it actually means is if you've got say um, Z1 and then you add on Z2 and then you add on Z3 and then you add on Z4 and so on, let's say n's equal to six and we end up doing, um, I don't know, we end up doing this. What it's saying, if, if we take the modulus of each of these individually and add them up, so to get from the starting point to the finishing point, we take this entire long route. Um, taking that entire route is going to be greater than or equal to the case where we just go straight from the start to the finish and take the modulus of that. And so that, that red line that I've drawn, that's the case where we have Z1 plus Z2 all the way up to Z6. So it's really just saying that it's in terms of distance, which is the modulus, it's quicker to take the direct route than it is to take all of the complex numbers um, individually, if that makes sense. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, I hope that made sense.